Well, Brian Kelly, welcome to Biscuits and Jam. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, where am I reaching you right now? Uh, down in Florida. I'm in our little uh, little pool house that I've coined. It's got two names. Uh, during songwriting season, when I'm going at it, it's the song saloon. And then uh, fishing season, it turns into the tackle box. <laughs> I like it. So this is your hideout. Yeah. This is really your, this is yeah. your place, your designated place. Yep. Yep. It is. It's small, but it's, uh, it's got a, you know, I've got some beer on tap. I've got some vibes. I've got some, some records. I've got a couch, a TV, you know, written a bunch of songs in here, tied a bunch of lures in here. And, uh, no, it's, it's a cool, it's just a cool little, uh, spot to just kind of like, you feel like you could be in a Montana hunting spot or, you know, down in the Keys. It's You could be either or, but we're just right outside the house. So it's like, <laughs> it's kind of a getaway, but not too far. Well, it looks great. Uh, so Thanks. are y'all, are y'all in Grayton Beach? Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So kind of near 30A, that's, yep. that area. That's right. Well, uh, congrats on the new album. I know you must be really excited. It's called Tennessee Truth. Yeah, and as a as a Memphis guy, I like that name a lot. Um, there you go. So I appreciate uh, that. Yeah, congrats! Uh, you must be really uh, thrilled to get it out there and share it with folks. You know, I am, man. It's uh, it's been a long time coming, and worked on this project for started writing on this project. Uh, shoot, the fall of 2022. So, um, you know, worked on it all last year. Um, wrote and recorded it, and um, man, really just had a blast. Now it's like. You know, my sign off is done. It's been done. I'm just starting to do press for it. And, uh, you know, we're right around the corner from it coming out. So, like, it's it's the best feeling in the world. All the work is just about is, is basically done, you know. And so now it's like, all right, what does everybody think? I hope you like it. And, you know, now now the fans that, that, that are already following what I do can can enjoy it and try to get out there and make some new fans. And uh, but no, it's just a, it's just a great season of life, man. I had a, a lot went into this record. You know, um, I really took my time songwriting wise, like just didn't really have a cutoff date until it felt like I was kind of just had exhausted all songwriting sessions and all ideas that were in my phone and just felt basically kind of done. Um, so that went on for a while and, and getting to record, you know, Dan Huff produced this record. I've been such a fan of his work for such a long time. And then um, obviously he's an, an incredible legendary guitar player. So he has a couple solos on this record and um, I just love what we created, man. I just love my unique brand of country that we created on this record. I think it's very special and I think it's, it's so me that it's just, um, I hope, you know, I hope everybody gets to know me even better. And I hope really you know, this record becomes the soundtrack to their lives. You know, I, I hope it takes over and it's something that they're playing, you know, and they're utilizing in their in their daily routine, whether that's going to the gym, going to work, you know, going out on the river, uh, maybe a beach day, you know, um, cooking out, just, you know, on the way to the woods, out in the woods, whatever it may be. I, you know, that's what this record is. You know, maybe, it, maybe it's a date night, a couple songs on there you can play for date night. And I really believe, you know, maybe maybe I'm biased because I, I wrote it or I, it's my project. But, you know, I think this record has something for everybody. I think it, it covers it just covers this life that I know a lot of us are living. You know, I'm not the only one living this life. And so I hope it resonates with, you know, with people that are hearing it. And one of my Tennessee truths is, you know, is that I'm, I'm no different than those that are going to be listening to this record. You know, there's we're, we're really like minded in the way that we operate that the core values that we believe in and that we wrap our lives around God, family, country, you know, Brittany and I, we love working hard. We love playing hard. We love having something to look forward to. We love getting, getting our feet wet in terms of getting in the business side, working hard, trying to build something that can live longer than us and enjoying the process and enjoying the way. So we're very simple. You know, we love, cooking at the house with the dogs and turn on some vinyl and being outdoors, fishing, hunting. Um, you know, it's just, we find ourselves wanting to be in these rural areas more and more. I, that's how I grew up. And that's how I've always been. You know, I like taking the long way to go somewhere. Uh, I like going the back ways. I like finding a local mom and pop's bait store, uh, I like a good old bold peanut stop out in the country, you know? And, um, 
it's those people, it's those conversations, and it's those places that these songs are built built on. I want to talk about the album a little more in a minute, um, but you know, let's go back to where you where you grew up, where you came from, and really, I guess the source of a lot of these songs and a lot of this music. Um, you grew up in in Ormond Beach, Florida. Yep which is uh, just north of Daytona, right? That's right. Tell me a little bit about your hometown. I love Ormond. My parents still live there. It's a special, special place to me. I was baptized in the Atlantic Ocean. Grew up on the Tomoka River. Um, you know, grew up playing a ton of baseball. And, you know, when I wasn't playing baseball, I was fishing. Uh, that, was, that was like my outdoor ritual. That was like my getaway whether that was the Tomoka River, whether that was the, you know, we had a retention pond uh, behind one of the neighborhoods close to us. We would tear bass up in there, um, but spent so many days, you know, when I wasn't playing baseball, hitting a golf course pond, hitting a neighborhood lake, you know, doing all those things just for the for the hunt uh, of largemouth bass. And and I've, I've done a lot of fishing since then, and I love all sorts of fishing. I really do, but you know, I find myself always coming back to those largemouth. That's something that just still brings me joy. Still, still something that I'm hunting down. And um, Orman was great, man. Great people. Um, I really loved my childhood. I loved my my middle and high school experience. Had some great friends. Learned a lot. And um, you know, Orman was great. You know, we could go out. You know, I had, I had buddies that lived. You know, fifteen twenty minutes from from our house. Uh, you know, out in the woods and we'd go mudding and we'd go hit the, hit the trails. And it was like kind of the best of both worlds where you could go be out in the country, be out in the woods, get in the mud. And then we could go to the beach later that day if we wanted to, you know, and get that experience. And so I found myself over the years just constantly wanting to be in the woods or by, you know, in the woods or by the water. That's kind of like how me and Brittany have lived our lives. And it's just kind of, kind of, you know, very, very grateful for that. And that's, that's, you know, that's, that's a big part of this record is being out in the woods or, you know, being by the water and something very calming about both and yeah. something very necessary for me to have both of those things in my life. You know, I, I think I, I, I've always been very in tune with nature and I love, um, even if I'm not hunting, just going on a walk in nature and looking for snakes or looking for birds or looking for, you know, any kind of wildlife, there's something very therapeutic about it. Yeah. You know, I don't really know Orman. Uh, I haven't been to that town or that part of Florida, but does it feel real Southern to you? I would say, in, yeah, I would say in the way that, that people operate, you know, um, it's definitely, you know, I think it's, I think it's best of both worlds. You know, I mean, you get close to the beach and it, you know, things look more beachy, you know, uh, so I would say in a sense that you can still be Southern and still be beachy because I think it's the attitude and, you know, the character of people and how people act and how people treat you and how welcome you feel, whether it's a restaurant or somebody sitting next to you on a beach chair. But then, you know, again, you go out State Road 40 and it feels more more Southern as you, you, you would think, you know, you have a lot more land out there, you're, you're you know, more rural areas. Um, but I never, I never thought about it being, having to be one or one or the other, you know, I thought it was cool that I just kind of made it my own. You know, I've, I've always kind of been that, you know, like love, like I said, love getting out in the woods, love going to the beach. And I think both of those go hand in hand. And I think you have a lot of Southern, we have a lot of Southern people from, you know, from Georgia that live, you know, on the outskirts of Atlanta, um, you know, that come to 30A, that, that, that plan there once, once a year, or once a quarter vacation, they go to the beach, you know? And so just a special, I think it's, it was special, you know, I, I would say just the way that, that people treat you is, is how I felt that it was Southern, you know? And, and then obviously fishing, hunting, I mean, there's lots of that going on down there. No, no, no doubt about it. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a pretty idyllic place to grow up. And, um, you know, I, I read somewhere that your dad, uh, worked for Hawaiian Tropic, which also yeah. sounds pretty idyllic, especially for <laughs> for a kid. How did what did that yeah. look, what did that look like? And and there had to be some you know fringe benefits for you. 
Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. So he had his own distribution company back in the day. It was HT Marketing of Florida. And so one of my favorite things was getting to, to go to work with him some days, like maybe it was on the tail end after school or something or on a weekend, you know, doing some deliveries or going to his warehouse and literally boxing these suntan lotion boxes up with tape and, you know, learning how to like work a little bit and, you know, carry boxes, stack them properly and, you know, learning how to do that and just watching him hustle, you know, even on weekends and even staying late and, oh, we're going to have to go out to, you know, the big wine tropic, the tanning research lab to go get more product or whatever it may be. That was really cool to see that. And those are, those are some great memories still to this day of just being in the warehouse, um, working, you know, I could still smell what it smells like. I can still hear like the tape rolls, you know, all those things. But yeah, the parties were great growing up as a kid, the Hawaiian tropic Christmas parties and Halloween parties <laughs> at Ron's house on the beach. Yeah. Uh, amazing memories. I mean, that that was like a scene out of damn Entourage or some movie, you know, I mean, it, it was it was, you know, there were celebrities there. There's the models there. You know, it was just it was a blast. He had, his house still to this day is one of my favorite houses. Beautiful, beautiful house built in the 80s. But just the materials, you know, like beautiful stone, wood, the architecture, just beautiful, beautiful setting. And so that was that was really special getting to go over there, even to have a couple pool days, you know, just on when nothing was going on. We, we would go over there and hang out at the house. And he always had a bunch of dachshunds and dogs. And maybe that's why I have a love of architecture. And we have four dogs. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I don't, I'm picturing lots of swag, lots of T-shirts and hats and oh, all man. kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were, the, <laughs> you know, my dad was called uh, the suntan man. So <laughs> that's great. And those wine tropic shirts were great, man. I've got a couple left over, like vintage ones. I mean, those are those are uh, those are keepers right there, man. You find any good old school Hawaiian tropic, you got some gold. Those would probably work out pretty well on eBay, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Well, so Brian, what about what about cooking in your house? Uh, who was the cook in your family, and what did that what did that look like? What was on the table? Growing up, uh, man, we cook out chicken, fish, and steak. I mean, that was that was a lot, you know, Dad. Dad would be grilling. Um, mom would m- mom would crush some sides, um, green bean casseroles, mac and cheese, you know. Um, but some of my favorite meals. Um, this is in middle school. We would do a fish, and Dad's like a, put it in tin foil, put some lemons in there, a little bit of salt, pepper, maybe maybe some Old Bay in there, a little bit of Old Bay, and then at the end, I throw some Louisiana hot sauce on there and kind of kind of douse it in that. But those were those were really cool. I thought steak was great growing up. But when, once we started really getting into fish, I think it was when Dad was trying to eat a little healthier. Yeah, we were doing some fish, and um, I just you could see like the the care and the intention of of prepping that. You know, it's got its tin foil, and he was real real on it on how to cook it, and like the the payoff was always great. It just tasted freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, um, those were some of my favorite meals. Dad steaks. Uh, he cooked a bunch of burgers. You know, we, when we lived on the river, we'd have friends over and he'd cook burgers and he'd do his famous, uh, put the cheese ball in the meat. So when you eat it, that like, cheese would come out everywhere. Those were fantastic. Might have to bring those back at some point. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like something you ought to pick yeah. up at, at home. Yeah. Yeah. But these days, uh, me and Brittany, we love cooking at the house. She is an incredible cook. I love grilling. I love doing it and I can, and I I will, and I do here and there, but I honestly love when, when I'm like the sous chef, because she is working with some flavors, man. I'm telling you, she's got some things going on. She's got one of my favorite steaks. Uh, She'll do it on a cast iron skillet for the first part of it and then stick it in the oven for like the last bit. Um, Kind of a restaurant style, you know, we'll do a filet that way. And it, it really doesn't need much more, you know, a little salt and pepper and it's, she, it, you get the right cut, the right brand. And, you know, you don't even really need steak sauce. It's that good. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> man, we'll do, you know, broccolini. We'll do, you know, a bunch of different greens. Sometimes we'll do a salad, um, fresh salad her steaks. And then, you know, we'll do, we'll have some mushrooms on the side, whatever. But I love, I love being a part of it. But I like when she leads the way cooking, man, because she does something with her flavors. Like she made me some cheesy eggs uh, earlier, like I was saying, and 
dude, just different. <laughs> I can do it and I can get by, but when, it's elevated when, when she takes control. <laughs> That's great. Well, Brian, I want to ask you about the, the church. And, you know, I, I talked to your old bandmate, uh, Tyler Hubbard, a while ago. And, you know, he was talking about how, you know, he grew up in the church and that was a big part of, of him kind of, uh, you know, really getting into music and performing. Yeah. And, you know, the two of you really connected over that um, yep. when, when you got to college. And, and so I'm curious what that looked like for you as a kid. What kind of environment were you in? And, you know, what did a, what did like a Sunday look like for you? From kind of as early as I can rem remember, you know, like we were we were going to church. We went to First United Methodist, you know, 10, 12 minutes from the house over uh, over across the bridge. And, um, you know, we were there. I was there all the, all through, I guess, high school. I started going to First Baptist downtown Daytona. And um, that's when I started really getting into probably even a deeper walk in my faith was was in middle halfway through high school um i went to this wednesday night you know uh middle high school service they had called fire by night and it was just next level the music was awesome people were just like it's like they were having a party but it was like worship you know it was like you're just feeling all sorts of things like the music's amazing you're you're just you're you're in it right you're with all these people that are you know worshiping and it, it was incredible and I was really drawn to right around that time uh, learning how to play guitar and got kind of plugged in with, with a couple of buddies at the church and a couple of friends from high school. And so uh, played in the, the youth band like a couple of times just on acoustic guitar, just simple chords. And that's kind of how I got my start ever playing live, ever doing anything. Um, and then once I got to college, I went to First Baptist uh, Tallahassee and started playing in the, the college band there. And really that was just playing acoustic as well. Um, it wasn't until maybe around, maybe second year of at Florida State, started leading, you know, started helping out leading, leading some worship and um, kept it going, moved back to Daytona, kept leading worship there, moved to Nashville, did it there. And um, no, I mean, it just, uh, just a part of, you know, something I loved, you know, it was, it was great to be a part of something bigger than yourself. It was great to, to challenge yourself, uh, learning, learning these songs and being able to, to play in church, you know, and to help lead worship and help be a part of something that's helping people get in a, get in a moment of peace or prayer and, uh, just get outside of, of this whole world of everybody's week of going so hard and, being caught up with everything. Right. And to, to be a part of a moment, 45, 30, 30 minutes of a congregation, that's, that's special. You know, I just, I've always felt, um, moved by, you know, contemporary Christian music or worship music, however you want to call it. There's a little bit of difference in, in both to me, but, um, you know, for, for a moment there, uh, you know, I wanted to, kind of be the, you know, casting crowns. Like I, I love that stuff. And that, that helped shape, you know, a lot of my life and a lot of who I am was, was leading worship in church and, and getting those, those opportunities to, to help lead and to, to help be part of a team. You know, it was really important. I grew a lot of my faith in those years and, um, you know, definitely thankful for, for those moments. And, um, you know, maybe down the road, when things slow down, I, I'll probably probably do it again. Was there a song um, or a hymn or something that stands out for you that you were kind of latched on to or that you maybe became known for that that you really like connected with as a performer? And you're like, OK, something's happening here. People are really feeling something in the in the audience. What do you yeah, go back to see here? I mean, Holy is the Lord, the Chris Tomlin one. When that, I mean that, when that came out, everybody knew that song, so it didn't even matter that I was singing it. It could have been anybody singing it, and it was just connecting because it was amazing. So that song, I mean, played that song a million times. But one song, um, I never, I don't think I ever played it live. It was more for like personal, like ingestion of helping get through a tough time. But I remember, you know, I got redshirted at Florida State on the baseball team my freshman year. And Praise You in the Storm had come out right around that time or so. 
by casting crowns. And, you know, that was a, that was a small storm in my life. You know, that was a pause on life. You don't get to play. You're not traveling. You're on the team, but you're not going anywhere. You're not playing. And so that, you know, and I found out like the week before the season started. So I had, I had no idea that that was going to happen. And so that, it hit me pretty hard. You know, I was, I was a freshman. I was look, looking to come in and play. So, you know, when my, my team was gone to Clemson or wherever for the weekend, you know, I was in my room learning how to freaking write songs, working on this recording program, sharpening my, my tools and just just getting in the music and getting my feelings out with songs and just trying to explore, you know, a, a capo on the guitar and different tunings and just really trying to figure it out, you know? And so I turned to music, writing it and listening to it to help me through a, through a, a difficult time, you know, of just like a waiting period, you know, a season of like, no, right? <laughs> you know, and praise you in the storm. I was like, man, I feel that I'm, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to choose to be positive and I'm going to choose to trust and know that God's got me and that I can get through this. And music was, music was everything. I mean, that's, one of the reasons I only probably got by, you know, was having having the outlet to write it and then having some music that was connecting with me by other artists to like help give me some strength, you know, and some some courage and some peace of mind, you know. Yeah. And so you really thought you might have a, a baseball career ahead of you? Man, I thought at one point, yeah, you know, um, you know, I came in highly recruited out of high school and then, you know, my sophomore year at Florida State didn't play much really at all. And uh, I just I wanted to go home and I wanted to play for Tim Tuma, who was at Daytona State. I knew he had a really tough program when it came to training and just the way that they ran their program. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do something really unexpected and I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to go get my butt kicked. And it was the best thing I ever did. It really was. It was it was really challenging physically and mentally. Um, everything that we trained through and for, you know, treading water with cinder blocks over our head until somebody says pass it. Then you pass it to the next guy. 6 a.m. swimming, uh, 5 a.m., three or four days a week workouts, hard workouts. You know, you have hell week in January. But, you know, those moments of of you know, when you think you can't get through something and you do, you know, it gives you strength. It gives you confidence. And so I've taken that mindset, a warrioristic mindset approach and lifestyle to everything I've done musically on the road. You know, when you're just not feeling it, or you're sick or you have to get through something, whatever it may be, you're, you're just a little off. You, you know, I go back to those moments of, well, I can get through this because I've, I went through hell week. <laughs> I, I, I've treaded right. water. I've treaded water with cinder blocks over my head. You know, I've I've done this. I've done that. And you can always do more than you think you can. And so I, I I channel those days a lot. I go back to those. I'm eternally grateful for 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 doing that. And that ended up getting me somehow to Nashville, um, at Belmont. And you know, my college career was a journey, and I'm so grateful for it, man. Like I knew I knew I was supposed to leave Florida State. I knew. By way of Daytona State, I was supposed to go to Belmont deep down in my gut. And, you know, Florida State was my dream school. Like, I, there's nowhere else I wanted to go and play. We grew up going to football games since I could walk and talk. And, um, you know, it, it hurt, you know, to leave. And it hurt, you know, to not, to not play my freshman year. But, you know, life is a, life is a journey. And uh, you just got to go with your gut. And, you know, there's always an open door somewhere if you keep moving along and you keep treading forward. You know, so speaking of the journey, you're at a really interesting juncture in your career right now. I mean, you know, you had this incredible run with Florida Georgia Line. Yes, sir. Thank you. I mean, incredible. Um, just like a rocket ship. And, you know, y'all are one of the biggest bands in country music. And then you make this decision that you're going to part ways and you're going to go go your own way and do your own thing and, and do the solo thing. How did y'all explain that to your fans? That had to be a, a you know challenging thing. I think we just said we were gonna you know focus on doing a bunch of everything you know at at that time. It was also a weird year. It was a weird year, you know. It was a super yeah, weird it's still year, kind right? of COVID COVIDy times. Yeah. but um, you know, really at the end of the day, I'm forever grateful for what we created and and those memories and just man the fans that we were able to make and connect with. You know, um. I still, I often think about that, you know, and just very, very grateful. A lot of gratitude on my end for, for what we, what we accomplished and, you know, what, 
we kind of did the impossible, you know, I'm, I'm not naive to that. I, so I, I'm just very, very thankful. I still hear a lot of our songs on radio a lot. Uh, yeah, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So does everybody. Yeah. Well, well, Brian, so, you know, you, uh, you know, you had this period before you met Tyler and, you know, you were writing music and, and, you know, performing and kind of doing your own thing. And then you go into, you know, Florida Georgia line for, for a long time. And now you've kind of come back uh, to doing your own thing. And I'm wondering when you kind of look at the, you know, the Brian before and the Brian now, how has your kind of perspective changed as a songwriter and an artist? Um, you know, do you feel like you kind of picked up where you left off or are you just a completely, you know, completely different person now? You know, I'm the same guy, you know, in terms of like at the end of the day, core values and, and who I am and what I love, what I believe in. But man, I, I have learned so much over the years, man. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, to be able to kind of start over as a solo artist, but have the the background and the history that I have in a duo, I mean, it, it, it kind of gives me in a sense, of, I guess a head start because, you know, we've done, a, we've done a lot of things over the years. It's so different writing just for yourself. You know, when you're writing for a group or duo, however you want to look at it, or somebody's in a, in a trio, you know, you're looking, you know, kind of a, maybe a majority wins or it's, it's easy to collaborate and say, you know, that's dope. If you like it, then I like it. And that works for both of us. And that's, that's awesome. And I love that. I love being a part of a team. I love collaborating. And on the other end of it, kind of being, you know, your own captain, it's also easier to, to say, no, I don't, I don't like that. Or I, w- I wouldn't say that per se. It's, right. I think it's a little easier to make it your own. And so I'm having fun with that, you know, had fun, you know, um, being in a duo, being, you know, collaborative that way. And now, you know, in this season of life, I'm really enjoying just kind of sharing with the world who I am. You know, I think um, it's it's been really fun to to share my voice and share who I am and what I'm about, you know, as as the story goes on. And so um, but as a songwriter, you know, really, man, I'm, I'm always learning. I don't I don't ever want to think I have it figured out because there's days where you just get your butt kicked in the songwriting room, you know, or or even starting something by yourself and not feeling inspired and not feeling like you're good anymore. Like, damn, wrote my, wrote my last good song yesterday, whatever it may be. But, you know, I've learned that you just keep showing up and it's, it's really not about, I think most songwriters, professional songwriters know, we know what to do with a good idea for the most part. It's just, how do we get to those good ideas and those good titles and those good hooks? Right. So it's just being patient And I really, I know this sounds simple, but songwriting and fishing, I compare the two. I really do, man. I see so many similarities because I do a lot of both. (laughs) You know, it's like you don't always catch a fish when you go. That's not always a given. They're not always biting. Some days they're freaking going off and you can't catch enough. You can't stop it, you know. And then there's, you know, and there's day songwriting where, you know, you could show up and get a song and, you know, I wrote that song. I like that song. I put my best into it, but am I going to personally record it? No, I might get, you know, hopefully somebody else does, but it's not, it's not something that I want for me, but that can't, you just have to keep going. You know, the more you fish, the more you're going to catch and the more you songwrite and songwriting, you know, the days that you leave with those songs that you're like, man, I, we, we wrote the crap out of that song but I don't think I'm going to record it. Those songs ha- will have a life, hopefully. And then those songs, I believe, get you to the songs that you love. If you don't write those songs, you're not going to get to the songs that you love, right? It's all about getting in there, putting the work in and being available to sit around and wait like you would fishing and throw your bo- throw your bobber in there and wait till it just wait till somebody says the right title or, or, you're digging through your phone for ideas or, Hey, let me go get my old notebook out up in my closet. I haven't looked through. Let me see if there's anything that pops through, you know? Well, there's that saying in fishing, you know, it's all about time on the water. Yeah. You got to, you got to put in the time. Yeah, that's right. So putting in the time, man, but just being respectful to the game, you know, like just, I don't, I've never thought I've had it figured out songwriting. I've gotten very lucky. I've, I put a lot of work in over the years and I spent a lot of time by myself you know, sussing out songs and ideas and, and journaling and writing poems and writing prayers out, you know, um, that 
some some are just for personal reasons and some I, I'm like, oh, that's a song and I'll write it down, you know. Um, but I work really hard at it and I have a really big respect for songwriting, for songwriters, uh, because, man, it's just you just never know. Some some you'll be walking around and inspiration hits and you got to get your phone out and you got to put get your voice memo. Or you got to type something out because some thoughts are, are very can be fleeting and you have to capture it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I want to talk about the new album and where some of these songs are are coming from. Um, it's called Tennessee Truth. And the title uh, for the album comes from this song, Kiss My Boots. It's, it's a line in, in Kiss My Boots. That's a song that's about, you know, somebody who's kind of, you've, you've gotten crossways with <laughs> somebody who's really, <laughs> you know, done you wrong. Um, tell me a little bit about that one and, and where that came from. Yeah. You know, that's funny you ask about that um, right after songwriting, because, you know, that's a prime example of being patient with the session of the day. You know, if if I hadn't, you know, stuck around that day, we wouldn't have written that song. You know, there's things that happened that specific day. Um, I didn't show up with that title. Nobody showed up with that title. It came out of thin air. I said it right when we got to the end of the hook. We kind of wrote to the hook and then landed on that. I had a guy on Zoom and then two buddies in the room and we went through ideas for hours, you know, um, piddling around. And I wanted to leave with something I loved and my buddy on Zoom had to get off and go get ready for a gig. And so we just started talking and going through ideas, going through riffs. And uh, one of my buddies said, you know, what about something, you know, just this little line. And this was the spark that we needed was, you know, what about something like you know, comes out with the whiskey, comes out in the whiskey. I was like, that's interesting. Not long after that, we were off to the races, you know, and realized quickly that this was a song about standing up for yourself. And, um, you know, I know me and all the writers in the room, definitely, you know, and probably you yourself, like in everybody in life, because it's a universal message of being done wrong. We all, you know, probably have two or three people on, on our kiss my boots list. You know, that's, that's a given. That's, that's life. And so, you know, this song for me, you know, I put it out because I wanted people to know that I'm a real person, that I have real feelings. I've gone through real scenarios and real situations and, and different relationships. And so it was important for me to continue the authenticity on this record, just like everything else. This song is no different. It's real. And it comes from a real place from me and me and my songwriting buddies. And, you know, I put it out because I know the power of of music music is healing you know i've got that tattoo right here it's helped me like i said along my my journey in life music as a writer as an artist and then as a fan man is it's just so powerful to me and so for you know i love that people can make this song their own you know i've gotten tagged by fans that are like thanks for my new workout jam they're working out for this song i've got people you know hitting me up saying hey I, how did you know what i was going through and that's the best compliment you know, that somebody could give an artist and a songwriter is being able to channel, you know, what's real to me and my collaborators is real to so many people, right? Because uh, a lot of people have been done wrong and a lot of people, you know, have, have these feelings and have had these thoughts. And so to, to give them an anthem they can relate to and listen to and use in their life in the way that they want is special to me. And it means a lot that it's out in the world. And, um, you know, I just, it's it's magic to me because I, I can't imagine if we would have called it quits that day and just, you know, we're not feeling it. We tried for a couple hours. This song wouldn't be around, you know. And so um, I'm just thankful, you know, to to have, you know, great collaborators. I'm, I'm thankful to have this drive inside of me when I wake up every day. I'm just grateful for life. I'm grateful to see, you know, what we can come up with and what how every day, every session, how can we put our truth into a song? Whether that's Acres, whether that's 10 o'clock on the dock, or whether that's Kiss My Boots. It's all about putting truth and realness into these songs. And so, yeah, I'm just glad it's out. You know, there's another one on there that, that uh, I liked called Dirt Cheap. And I don't, I don't yeah. know if you were a writer on that one, um, but it's, uh, it feels very much, you know, at home on this record. Thank you. Um, what did that song mean to you? You know, that song I didn't write, but just for, you know, just like you said, man, that song, uh, I listened to it for the first time. My label sent it to me over a year ago, probably at this point. And uh, I was in my truck listening to this little link. And that was just off, based off the title. 
I go, I'm going to listen to this one first. I'm probably going to love this. And I, I was curious on how the title was going to fall into the hook and how that was going to play. And right immediately, you know, first couple lines, you grew up in a small town kind of like mine. And think about all those lines. I was like, okay, turn it up a little louder. I'm in. I like this. And it gets to the chorus. Then it gets to the end. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, so I called my label. I was like, are you sure this is available? Like, nobody's nobody's got this on hold. They're like, no, it's all you if you want it. I go, yeah, I want it. You know, this song is this song is is literally, you know, me. And I know this song is is a lot of other people and the way that they think and what they're wanting in their life. And so uh, it was a no brainer. Like I, I, I had to record it immediately. And I'm, I'm grateful that you know I got to call that song mine. And they wrote the heck out of that song. You know, it's special. It That song puts me in a mindset. It puts me in a place. Uh, it keep that song keeps me dreaming. I love that song. And that's what good country music does. You know, it's, it's an escape. It's, uh, it's so many different things. And that song is, is, you know, makes me, uh, makes me really happy that it's mine. Yeah. You got a lot of great music on there and, and I know you're excited to get out on the road, um, and share it with folks, but it's also got to be a little bit hard to leave great and beach. You got a pretty good life down <laughs> yeah. there and you got a lot going on. Um, you've got a restaurant, right? You got a burger place that you've opened up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Papa surf burger bar is, uh, up and running. We're about to hit our first summer season. So, uh, we're, we're hoping and expecting some big crowds and some smiling faces. Um, but we've created a, a, a memory maker, you know, it's more than a burger joint. We've created a space where families, locals and tourists can come in and create a bunch of memories. You know, we've got a setting that is unlike any other. It's a renovated old house that was a cafe and we've transformed this place into something really, really special and unique. And the backyard is a sight to see, you know, it's got massive magnolias in the back. So you've got lots of shade and then a bar built around it, lots of seating. And, um, you know, we've got great drinks, got our liquor license, got some great beer and the burgers are slamming. I promise you, you will not be let down. You will leave full and happy. We're just grateful that we could, um, team up with the Glavin family and, uh, Jason and Brittany Aldean and, and give 30A, um, a really cool spot to, you know, go and have some drink drinks after work, have some burgers. And, you know, for everybody that's coming here down this summer, that's going to be on the beach, you're going to get hungry. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get thirsty and you're going to need some shade. So, you know, in those moments, come see us. We'll take care of you over at Papa Surf. Um, <laughs> but, great. you know, really being able to combine Brittany and I's love for multiple things on this project is what's made it really fulfilling. You know, you get, you know, we get our architecture design fix. We get our burger fix. We get our entrepreneur fix. And then like our, you know, we love hosting. We love projects and building things and we love collaboration. And that's what, that's what this is all about. And we've got great partners with the Aldeans and Glavins. We've got great staff, great crew, great team. And so, you know, it really feels like we're building something special. I'm really proud of it. And, uh, you know, the long-term goal uh, is to have multiple locations in, in specific coastal areas. So, Maybe maybe one day when the time is right, we'll have uh, get back to Ormond. Pop up. Maybe get back, man. Put one up in Ormond. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, it, sound, it sounds like Brittany's a pretty great cook, so she's got that. She is. She's got that end of it covered. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, Brian, I just have one more question for you. What does it mean to you to be Southern? It means a lot to me, you know, and I think it it's important to me, and I think it's. It's a way of life. It's a mindset. It's how you treat people. It's 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 how you're raised as much as who you are today, you know. And I think you could be southern and not be from a southern state, and that's what I think makes it so special, you know. So it doesn't necessarily to me because people could say you're from uh, you know a different place, and I'm a cowboy, I'm country, and who's to say that that you're not? It's how you act and how you represent yourself, and and it's who you are that makes you Southern, not necessarily where you come from. I think people probably know that. So it means a lot to me. I'm grateful uh, for my childhood. I'm grateful for my parents setting a great example for me of love and, you know, my, my grandmommy and, and, you know, the, the Southern traditions that, that we've had over the years and, and things that I look back now that she's gone and, 
trying to keep some of those traditions alive and how she grew up even, you know, and what her interests were. And I think being Southern is carrying those traditions on, you know, and that's why, you know, Brittany and I just bought a little farm. We had one years ago and then we sold it and knew we were going to get another one at, at some point, but we just bought a little piece of land um, outside of, outside of Nashville, about 30 minutes or so. And, you know, just, just uh, these things, things that are important, you make time for and you make part of your life and that's just who you are. And I think that's being Southern. So it means a lot to me. Um, I'm proud of it. And it's uh, you don't have to be from just a Southern state. So if anybody's out there listening, you can be Southern too. It's just, it's just all how you are. <laughs> well, I hope you got a bass pond on that little farm. We do. There's a Creek that runs through it. It's dammed up in a nice little pond. And uh, I've already caught some bass on it. We hadn't had it but a couple weeks, and I've already slayed some bass. That's 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 good. That's a good sign. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Brian Kelly, um, good luck with the tour and the restaurant, and congrats, I appreciate it. Congrats on the new album, and uh, thanks so much. Thank for you being so on, much on biscuits and jam. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.